Hi, I'm Jane Kay. I'm a senior scientist at Dairy NZ, and this is a feed right video on carbohydrates. Now, in this video, we will talk about the different types of carbohydrates, what happens when a cow eats carbohydrates, and how carbohydrates impact on cow production and performance. So, what is a carbohydrate? All plants contain carbohydrates, and these provide the main energy source for the dairy cow. There are two main types of carbohydrates that are found in feeds. Non-structural carbohydrates, which contain sugar and starches, and structural carbohydrates, which include the cellulose and hemicellulose. These carbohydrates are all made up of sugar molecules, with the only difference being the chemical bonds that join them together. These can be compared with building Lego, where the individual Lego blocks are the simple sugars that make up the carbohydrates. Sugar, such as found in molasses, is like having a pile of Lego blocks, some sugar molecules, pulled apart and ready to be used. Then starch, which is high in cereal grains and vegetable wastes, is like Lego blocks joined together in a simple way. They need to be pulled apart before they can be used. Finally, the structural carbohydrates, such as cellulose and hemicellulose, that are found in good quality pasture, are like having a more complex structure made from Lego that takes different mechanisms to pull apart before they can be used. Luckily, the bugs in the rumen are capable of breaking apart these complex structures so the sugar molecules, or the Lego blocks, can be used by the bugs for energy. So, let's have a look in more detail as to what happens to these carbohydrates when they're eaten by the cow. When a cow eats a food, be it a forage or a concentrate, the carbohydrates in this food are broken down or fermented in the rumen by microbes to form simple sugars. The microbes then use these simple sugars as an energy source and in doing so produce waste products. These waste products include gases, heat and volatile fatty acids. The volatile fatty acids are the most important waste products in that they provide the cow with energy and they affect milk fat and milk protein production. There are three main volatile fatty acids produced when carbohydrates are digested, and these are acetic, propionic, and butyric acids, or more often called acetate, propionate, and butyrate. The proportion of each of these acids depends on the type of carbohydrate that the cow has eaten, and to a lesser extent, the rumen environment. If the cow is eating a diet high in forages, such as pasture or silage, these feeds contain high levels of structural carbohydrates. Now that's the cellulose and hemicellulose. The microbes that digest these structural carbohydrates produce a large proportion of acetate. Now acetate is absorbed through the rumen wall, it passes into the liver and acts as a building block for fat synthesis to produce either milk fat in the mammary gland of a lactating cow or body fat in the adipose tissue of a cow that is gaining condition. The microbes that digest structural carbohydrates are sensitive to high levels of dietary fat and also an acidic environment or low pH of the rumen. If the cow was to eat a diet that contained high levels of unsaturated fats such as sunflower oil or canola oil or if the rumen pH dropped or became too acidic through eating a diet high in sugars and starch, the growth rate of the microbes that digest the structural carbohydrates slow down and the microbes themselves may even be eliminated. Reduction or elimination of these microbes reduces the digestibility of feeds that are high in structural carbohydrates, such as pasture, and can also reduce the cow's intake and performance. In theory, structural carbohydrates are digested about five times slower than starches and nearly a hundred times slower than sugars. However, the structural carbohydrates, the cellulose and hemicellulose, that are found in high quality pastures are digested at a similar rate to starches. On the other hand, if pastures are of poor quality due to poor pasture management or dry conditions, there is a buildup of lignin in the pasture. Now, although lignin is not a carbohydrate, it binds with the structural carbohydrates and makes them less accessible and harder for the microbes to digest. Now, this is like sticking the Lego blocks together with super glue. If the lignin content is high, then some of the structural carbohydrates pass through the rumen undigested and are excreted in the dung. 
So let's move on to look at what happens when a cow eats feeds that are high in non-structural carbohydrates. So that's the sugars and the starches. Feeds high in sugar include molasses and fodder beet, while feeds that are high in starch include cereal grains such as barley, wheat or maize. The microbes that digest starch are different from the ones that digest the structural carbohydrates. They primarily produce propionate as their waste product. Now the propionate that's produced in the rumen makes its way to the liver, where most of it is converted to glucose. Now the liver is the sole source of glucose production for the dairy cow, of which she has a high demand, particularly for milk production. In a lactating cow, a large proportion of the glucose that has been produced in the liver is transported to the mammary gland, where it is used to form lactose, which is the main driver for milk volume. What we also see is that if we increase the amount of glucose produced, we see increased insulin, and among its other functions, this results in an increase in the uptake of amino acids into the mammary gland and an increase in milk protein production. So a diet high in starch, one that contains cereal grains, will result in more milk volume and more milk protein. If high levels of starch are eaten, lactic acid can also be produced. Now, propionate and lactic acid reduce the pH or the acidity of the rumen, which as mentioned before is detrimental to the microbes that digest structural carbohydrates. In contrast, the microbes that digest the starch are not sensitive to a low rumen pH. Consequently, feeding the high levels of starch in the diet, such as barley or grain, can result in a build-up of microbes in the rumen that continue to lower the rumen pH and this can eventually result in rumen acidosis. If for some reason some starch is not digested in the rumen, it passes through to the small intestine where the dairy cow only has a limited capacity for digestion and absorption. Therefore, only a small proportion of any undigested starch is absorbed from the small intestine and contributes to the glucose pool in the liver. The remainder, like with undigested structural carbohydrates, is excreted in the dung. Finally, the microbes that ferment soluble sugars, a carbohydrate that is high in feeds such as molasses, are similar to those that digest starch. However, these feeds are generally digested at a faster rate and cause less problems with increased acidity in the rumen. Digestion of sugars results in the production of propionate and butyrate. We've already discussed propionate. Now butyrate is a little different. As it is absorbed across the rumen wall, it is converted to beta-hydroxybutyrate and then moves into the liver. Now beta-hydroxybutyrate is a ketone body that can also come from the mobilisation of body fat when the dairy cow is in a state of negative energy balance. Now the ketones are used by the dairy cow as a source of energy. They are also used for fatty acid synthesis in the mammary gland and adipose tissue and for muscle growth. So in summary, Carbohydrates are fermented in the rumen and they are all broken down into the same simple sugars, but different microbes use these sugars to grow and therefore produce different waste products or different volatile fatty acids. If the cow was to eat feeds that are high in structural carbohydrates, such as pasture or soya holes, then acetate is the primary volatile fatty acid that is produced and this results in increased milk fat synthesis. If the feed was high in starch, such as maize grain, this results in increased propionate and subsequently an increase in milk protein and milk volume. Feeding high levels of sugar, such as as in fodder beet, will result in an increase in butyrate production and a subsequent increase in milk fat. Diets that are too high in non-structural carbohydrates, so that's your starch and your sugar, or if these feeds are introduced into the diet too quickly, they also produce lactic acid, which can lower rumen pH and result in rumen acidosis. So, by the end of this video, you should be able to name the three different types of carbohydrates, describe what happens to these when the cow eats them, and how they impact on cow production and performance. <music>